Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And mark this day on your calendar. Mark it on your calendar. We actually agree with the Walt Disney Company. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we <laughs> okay, to be fair, we have agreed with them on different things for years is why we started what we do. But in the recent past, we agree with them this week for one thing. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this. I think we did actually do a video on this when it first happened. I know I did an article on it before, yeah. There is this uh, uh, mouse ear mouse merchandise seller who was banned from Disney World because he was apparently trying to confuse people, thinking that uh, he was an official Disney company. Okay, I can explain it a little better. Okay, here explain bit. this to me a little bit. But better. do you want to do before we get into any further? Yeah, first? before we get into it, <laughs> so? before we get into any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views. Rants, guys, get yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about this. Uh, Disney won their lawsuit against him. I don't think they were as... Well, it's him and her. It's him and his wife. Him and his wife. But I don't think they were as as mean as they could have been. And no. from my understanding, they kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Yeah. So, okay. It goes back a ways. So, it started out, they had like a Facebook group with some groups. And they were doing this this website. It was like a secret Disney group. Secret Disney group, group or something. Or something. Yeah. And then, I don't know if Sparkling Dreamer's name came after that later, but they had the secret Disney group that kind of met people think it was like Disney. Right. As you can see in the one icon, it looks like Walt or Disneyland's logo. Yes. So it's funny because they tried to trademark that, which is a whole other story. Yeah. Um, but they were selling like their bootleg merchandise. They had masks, does ears, shirts, and stuff. They were selling it through their, I guess they had their company's location as Walt Disney World. As what the, what the location was yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that's so, so smart. Disney sent them a couple of cease and desist letters. Yes. And they ignored them. Well, I guess they didn't ignore them. They did try to make some changes. and and But it's still, I think that's where that, that uh, sparkling dreamer thing came dreamers, out. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that's why they had the second logo for that. They tried to take it away that it wasn't at Disney World anymore and some other things. But apparently, it still wasn't enough for, for Disney because then he, they slapped him with a 700-page lawsuit in january of 2023 700 page 700 okay. page lawsuit what so, that cost them i don't i, I that's the thing i'm sure it cost him a lot so then that was going on then come march he was at disney park now i'm not sure what he was doing at when he was at the park they said that he was listing on main street that one i can't i can't speak to but he said he was live stream walking around he, was, he live stream walking being walked out of the park yes on instagram live and facebook um, he was, so he was flaunting the fact that he got he got kicked out of Disney World because of this, and then he went he goes and he live streams it. Hey, look, as everybody! As he's getting kicked out, yeah. Oh my god! And he said he dude. was banned for annual pass violations. Which, if you're buying and reselling, that's that. But I'm not really sure what that was about. But he got banned. Now, depending where you talk, you look. Some people say he's banned from all Disney properties, which is I don't think is the case because he was just po posting from Tokyo Disney Sea yeah. like recently. So apparently, he's not banned from everywhere. But he was, he said, but some reports from his viewers stated he was soliciting and attempting to sell his merchandise on Main Street USA, as well as using his annual pass discount to buy merchandise and then sell it to his followers on an upcharge. That is a big no-no. People yes. go in there and you see everybody coming out with big bags full of stuff when their merchandise drops. You are not allowed to use your annual pass to buy merchandise at discount and then, and then mark it up to sell. That violates the terms of service for the annual pass. And what they'll do is they'll cancel it and then they will, they'll still charge you for it take the money and just be like oh well you're sol yeah so there are so yeah this lawsuit happened and uh, he was trying to get people to to side with him i i mean again this article comes from inside the tragic but uh, i'll give him i'll give him some credit here but um i uh i don't agree with it because they just kept pushing it yeah so i guess what ended up happening was the lawsuit was settled um yes. apparently but they, they got off pretty easy. I mean, they're going to have legal fees, which I'm sure was a lot. But yeah. basically, the result was that they had to take their sites down. Yes. And that they, if they ever infringe on Disney's copyrights again, they have to pay $100,000. So they got off pretty easy. And apparently, they they're allowed, again, the par yeah. apparently, they're allowed in the parks because they were at Tokyo Disney Sea just not long ago. Yeah. And in this case, like, look, th these people push it. And I know I know people do a lot of Disney adjacent stuff. And my... my um, because they were, yeah, they were trying to uh, trademark yes. their, their logos, which look very. So here's a, here's a, just a real brief, like how trademark law works. As I understand it, we've been in trademark disputes 
basically you have to be using it and you have to know if you're going to register a trademark, you can't consciously willingly register something that you know somebody else is using or make it look uh, like theirs with the intention of deceiving them and, you know, somebody into thinking it's your business. Like if you have, if you know, there's a Joe's sub shop and uh, he's got a logo, that looks a certain way. And then you also to try to siphon some of his customers off, open up a Joe's sub shop and then try to trademark a logo that looks very similar to his. Maybe you're spelling it uh, uh, just, uh, you know, J O versus J O E, you know, but it looks similar enough that could be argued that you maliciously tried to, you know, uh, infringe on his his trademark rights. Now, I mean, look, like when you look at the secret Disney, like the D's, like the, the usual Disneyland D, and it uses the same font. Um, that one I can see. The, I, what gets me is they have the Disney World marks. They put Disney Dream. Disney Dream and Sparkling Dreamers aren't related. I, I think that's pushing it. You know, they're saying the Disney Dream is why they couldn't do Sparkling Dreamers. That one's, you know, but they're using the castles, like the Disneyland castle is the problem. Yeah. So yeah, they, they followed the cease and desist, specifying they wanted to avoid litigation, but stated in their suit that Martin continued to sell the unlicensed product, ignored the demand to surrender them and even use sales promotions to sell them as quickly as possible. But um, why, but here's the thing about that. You surrender them. Why? They, you know, why you, I don't think they could take that. Why should they be allowed to take that? You know what I mean? Why should you surrender them? I yeah. mean, he could burn them for all he wanted or he could, you know, gave them away. But they, they, I don't, I think asking them to surrender the stuff he paid for was a bit much. I think they probably wanted to make sure that the stuff was destroyed. <laughs> surrender them so we can, we can sell them. At all. I mean, yeah, we'll just mark them up, sell them in the park. We, that, that's never happened to people on Etsy before ever. Yeah. Then on March of uh, 2023, yeah, he live streamed being walked out of park yes, by police officers. He was, he was trespassed and then banned. So he was using this to play up, um, I think like, oh, Disney's out to get me. Disney's out to get me. But I'm like, you're playing with fire, dude. Like Disney, they don't mess around. They got some of the best lawyers on the planet. And if you're willingly, knowingly doing uh, merchandise that could could be confused for, it's not parody of, it's not uh, an homage. I mean, people do ears and stuff. And you're, not, and you're just doing just basic ear. They, they could claim that they own the mouse ear thing or whatever. But people make them all the time and they don't care. It's because he was there selling them, you know, I think apparently on the streets and stuff. And then yeah, you're saying you can't that do they that. are located at Walt well, Disney World. And it's a secret Disney group implying that it's like they're real legitimate stuff. And that's the problem. I'm sorry. This kind of stuff you cannot do. They have very clear rules against it. They have they have rules against you know, passing yourself off as a tour guide or don't, you know, any of that kind of stuff. There, there, I think we talked about it in another video, but there was a time when, uh, you know, disabled people would basically, you know, let other people hire them as tour guide, quote unquote tour guides. And then they would use their, uh, you know, GAC pass, the, 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 get was it the guest access mm-hmm. card or whatever, yeah. which was if, if you were, uh, disabled or unable to wait in line that you could kind of jump to the front of the line, they would take a whole bunch of like 10, 12 rich New Yorkers with them. They get paid, you know, a couple thousand dollars for the day as an unauthorized tour guide. And Disney's kind of like, yeah, no. I don't think the, they even got that much because that'd be what you pay for the real ones. Yeah. Yeah. But it'd just be like people are selling their fast passes. They were selling, you know what I'm saying? Like all this crazy stuff is going on. And Disney is like, Hey, if, if you're in the mouse trap, the only one getting cheddar is Mickey. Like mm-hmm. nobody else is making money. You pay us. It doesn't, you don't make money off of us. And there, there always are, you know, kind of these, uh, uh, ancillary businesses or tertiary businesses. Obviously they grew up around, uh, around Disney World and Disneyland selling, uh, you know, stroller services or whatever. And they're, they kind of come up against it. I think sometimes like, oh, you can rent a Cinderella stroller. Yeah. Well, but, yeah but a lot of them, they just provide a service and they bring it to the parks for you and you, you're allowed there's to no do that. There's no confusion. Like, you know, right. it's not it's actually not Disney, Disney official. And but, this one, because it's, it, but I mean, it, it, Disney told them to stop. They told them to stop. They, they kept pushing them twice. It. Um, you know, and they won. They won. But they were actually, I think they, they were pretty easy. I think they um, got away with it pretty easy, yes. Yeah, they said they agreed to shut down their stores according to a stipulated permanent injunction, final judgment approved by the courts. They also agreed to pay Disney $100,000 if, if, if they ever infringe against Disney again. So they could have been, Disney could have been like, how much in sales have you done mm-hmm. over the last, you know, I want to see some receipts. How, how much have you done in the last, you know, 10 years or however long you've been doing it? We want all that money back. Um, you know, so they could have been a lot harsher on them. Now this kind of comes in to play, I think with uh, artist alley, people always wonder why 
Disney doesn't crack down on Artist Alley. And I think the, the short answer, as I understand it, is volume. Uh, if somebody is selling a massive volume of like Marvel or Disney or Star Wars stuff or whatever, Disney might come knocking because you're like, hey, especially if you're a professional and you're, you're doing that, it's worth their time to pursue it. But for most people, it's like, wait, Disney's going to spend how many thousands of dollars in legal fees to chase some mom and pop for, you know, whatever they made at a convention last weekend. It's not really, mm -hmm. it's not re really worth it for them. And I think but that's they've it. they've gone off the deep end and went after, pre after like daycares for having murals before and stuff. They have. I, I think, think it's it, radar too, whatever's on the radar. I think, I think that's a big part of it. Whatever's on the radar. And I think, I think the fact that this guy flaunted it like he did. Um, like, oh, I'm going to well, go back to the parks and, you know, and he sold got, the like, stuff in the parks. He got a lawsuit against him for doing, and then he walked, he walked into the parks and was live streaming it in the parks two months after he got the lawsuit. I mean, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Now this is interesting. This is coming from, uh, uh, Florida politics. And, uh, they're talking about this one law professor who's an expert in IP law, reviewed the court documents, um, at their request and said, the case sends a clear message. Don't mess with the mouse. Mm -hmm. Disney, unless you're, unless you're the governor of Florida. Uh, Disney's one of those entities that rarely files a case if they don't already know they're almost certain to win, especially when they've been in constant contact with the defendants, uh, as was the case here. Yeah. They're not just going to hit them with boom. We're going to shut you down. We're going to sue you for a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. They gave them time to make they it gave right. Them plenty of time. But again, it sounds like I think Disney would accept is that you have to take everything down completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they said he declined to comment Friday if asked if he had issues entering Disney's Tokyo Park. But that one's a, a joint ownership deal, isn't it? Yeah, I think it they is. have Yeah, there's a Japanese company that, that runs that. So, yeah, they, they uh, shut down their group, whatever. His next project is a social media group about traveling. So he'll just talk about general travel. Watch him switch to Universal. So she joked in this article, he signed the paper, I guess, or whatever, you know, for the finalized the, the court thing. He was at Universal. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, look, I, I think in this case, like, we're hypercritical of Disney. But in this case, he, he clearly was trying to confuse people or at least trying to bank on the, you know what I'm saying? And there are a yeah, lot of people I, that sell stuff that do not get in trouble with I Disney. I think Disney oversteps a lot of times. And I think that they go, they get ridiculous. But in this case, I think, you know, they, they, they tried to do it, you know, in a quiet manner first to handle it without, you know, going this far. And the person was just like, and then he goes down, flaunts it by doing it actually in the park. He sells the stuff I'm in like, the park. I'm like, what the heck? If, that, if that's true. That's what they said. If that's yeah, true. Obviously for social media brownie points, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just like, yeah, of course they won. Of course they won. And, uh, you know, it's, I, they could have been a lot, they could have been a lot worse. So anyway, we're going to uh, wrap this one up. Yep. All right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.